term ombuddy. Andy Levy is a graduate of Columbia University with a degree in political science. He is a veteran of the United States Army, um, served on the DMZ. And in case of an invasion by North Koreans, his job was to die slowly so that reinforcements has had time to arrive. <laughs> he lives alone and will one day be described by his neighbors as the shy, quiet type who mostly kept to himself, but he's not keeping, himself, keeping to himself tonight. Everybody, welcome Andy Levy. I also have the honor of introducing Bill Schultz. He graduated from Emerson College with a degree in print journalism and survived being a Manhattan-based freelance writer and magazine editor before getting a call from Fox News in 2007. Among his listed accolades includes um, drinking around the world at Epcot, boxing someone five inches taller and 100 pounds above his weight class, using nothing but rock, Rocky, um, the, the montages from the Rocky movies to prepare, and he actually snuck back into college for a week to see if it was as fun as he remembered. Everybody welcome Bill Schultz. A stink bomb hurled into every faculty line of mainstream newsroom, movie studio, and nonprofit boardroom in America. And he was a contributor at the Huffington Post, where he became legendary for his inspired, lunatic ridicule of his left wing fellow Huffers. His book, his new book, The Bible of Unspeakable Truth, will be for sale here today, and he will, is gracious enough to stay and sign them. And consider yourself warned. Please welcome Greg Gutfeld. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, uh, 
somehow we ended up on TV, we're still not sure how. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you leave out two important parts of this. One, this is the only example in broadcasting history where a, uh, a guy who leaves comments on a blog gets a job. <laughs> <laughs> it never happens, but it should give you some kind of, you know, I don't know, a dream to shoot for. The, the other thing is that he also leaves out is that he was the worst person ever on television. When we did oh, that. absolutely. Yeah, I just assumed that. I, I, would, I, I was, at the very least, close second. Yeah, yeah. Like, the, the joke now is all not look at the camera, but I did, did do it for real. Like, the camera would be here and I was looking this way. Like, we had no idea what yeah, we were Yeah, if anybody remembers Red Eye in the first couple months, it was yeah. awful. Terrible. <laughs> bad, bad. I would, if, I could, if I could just hijack YouTube and remove every one of those. Actually, Fox News did that for us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll stop there. Next question. Why do you think young people are so predominantly liberal? Oh, can I answer that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am a young person here. Uh, when you're young, you're, you're driven by two, uh, a need to impress, a need for attention, and you tend to romanticize things. And uh, by the very nature of being a liberal, it, you tend to be uh, more, uh, the issues tend to be more romantic. Uh, homelessness, I mean, who's, who wouldn't be for helping a guy down in his luck? Uh, feeding the poor, building houses, these are all romantic things. You've never built me a house. I know, I will. But <laughs> it's finally legal for us. Right. But the thing is... <laughs> thing about, about teenagers is that they can be for anything and everything and never have to pay for it. So yeah. there is never any discussion about how, you know, when I was growing up, made for TV movies were always about the kid who brings home a homeless guy. It's like a Christmas holiday special. And everybody's, well, that doesn't really happen because somebody has to pay for that. And, then, uh, and teenagers don't understand that. And they're exactly like Hollywood celebrities in the fact that they live in a bubble and they never have to pay for the actual things that they believe in. It isn't until you're, you're that old line, I don't know if it was Buckley or whoever said, you know, until you know, uh, conservative is a liberal mug. Once you get a job and once you pay taxes, you are mugged. And then you become uh, a Republican, or like the you just become, you know, a ranting drug abuser. Taxes, taxes, taxes. <laughs> By the way, you never pay taxes on drugs. Yeah, it's true. Tax free life. Yeah, I just want to add to that. I guess also, uh, when you're when you're young, you tend to think you know everything. And when you think you know everything, you're comfortable with people in Washington who you think are smart running everything for everyone because you think, well, they know everything. As you get older, you realize you don't know everything, and once you realize that, you think, well, if I don't know everything, people in Washington probably don't know everything, so they probably shouldn't be running everyone's life. And you become a conservative, or if you're smart, a libertarian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I think it's, you know, Red Eye does it, and a lot of people do it. You're seeing it a lot more with Breitbart, and, and just mm -hmm. in, in the blogosphere, it's just humor and mockery, which the, the left has always mastered so well. I mean, uh, every, you know, if you go back to, you know, the 60s and 70s with Smothers Brothers and Abby Hoffman, and this kind of like, it was cool and funny, and every, I call it the Dean Wormer effect. In Animal House, every conservative is Dean Wormer. And all the cool guys were the liberals. And what I, my little goal at the Huffington Post originally was to flip it. So to get liberals to be offended and to be self-serious. And that's when you win, I think. It's, it's, it's always to be a happy warrior, as I uh, often said about Jack Kemp, is to have fun. Never take yourself too seriously. Uh, uh, I have a problem with right-wing activists and left-wing activists because they take themselves so seriously. Well, and when you did that on Ariana Huffington's blog, uh, she actually, she liked it. I mean, yeah. she, she, she actually, not to steal your thunder, but she called Greg an ombudsman. Like, she's like, oh, Greg is our ombudsman. <laughs> <laughs> we have to very hard for the left, but Greg's got to clear this up a lot. she become Irish? <laughs>
<laughs> a lot of arms crossed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Andy, how are your cats? Nope. <laughs> I'll have this one for Andy. Andy does not speak about his cats. Uh, I represent both his cats. They are available for commercial opportunities. They will not do an interview without, without me. Yes. And uh, please do not ask any political questions. <laughs> Particularly Stormy, a bit of a racist. <laughs> Kingsel is not a racist. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if we do well here, 